listen to that sound. They both smell delicious. Hello everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to today's episode of the vlog. My name is Sean and I'm a YouTuber from Edinburgh in Scotland and in today's episode we're talking about some kind of cultural phenomenon that not many people might know about Scotland but we have a national drink and you might think it's whiskey. There's quite a few of them up there on the shelf behind me. Whiskey, everybody knows Scotland about whiskey but did you know that we have a soft drink that is probably much more famous and much more consumed within Scotland? I'm talking about Iron Brew. More about that in a little second, I just want to say first of all, welcome, it's great to have you all here. Thank you very much for joining me on another episode. Let's talk about Scotland, let's talk about the world. And if you're new here, please don't forget to hit the red subscribe button down below, join the family, let's join in and let's have some fun. You may or may not remember, about a year and a half ago, one of the most famous, iconic Scottish brands broke the hearts of the nation, literally broke Scotland. If you don't know what Iron Brew is, and you're interested in Scotland, get familiar. This is one of the most famous, iconic Scottish drinks there is out there. Not whiskey, not beer. Iron Brew is the drink that all of us in Scotland grew up with, right? Ginger, as some of us might call it, for obvious reasons. This is our pop, our soda, our juice as we call it in Scotland, and it's like the thing of childhood dreams. Iron Brew is our national drink. Scotland is actually one of the only places in the whole world where a drink other than Coca-Cola is a top selling. Brewed to a secret recipe since 1901, and don't you dare say it tastes like bubblegum because it does not, it tastes of girders. Iron Brew, made in Scotland from girders. About a year and a half ago, Iron Brew decided, you know what, a winning formula for over a hundred years, let's mess with it. A sugar tax was introduced, right? A sugar tax imposed by the government, meaning that any drinks over a certain um, grammage of sugar per milliliter, I don't know exactly what the figure was, right? would have a higher tax to pay. Iron Brew decided rather than pass that cost on to the consumer, they would scrap their original Iron Brew recipe full of sugar and replace that sugar with artificial sweeteners. Mainly aspartame. People were outraged in Scotland. I myself campaigned on my channel. There's a series of videos you will find on my channel about Iron Brew, about them changing the recipe, the outrage that ensued and like, what could we do about it? And Iron Brew sales, Bar, the company that owns Iron Brew, the brand, their sales plummeted. Maybe they were in danger of losing their top spot to Coca-Cola again, which maintained their sugar. And this stuff did not taste the same. It didn't hit the same spots. It wasn't Iron Brew anymore, the stuff that we grew up with, the nostalgia. I just remember this every single weekend getting an Iron Brew treat. We even had the sweets. It was like, it was everything. It's like part of Scotland's national psyche, part of our national identity, our cultural makeup, you will find Iron Brew in that story. Certainly my generation and generations before it, it is just a big cultural phenomenon. I don't know if you can compare this to anything from your part of the world, wherever you are, but trust me, Iron Brew is a big thing in Scotland. So when they changed that recipe, it was very upsetting. A lot of people, you know, could not take it. They were stockpiling the original Iron Brew before the remaining stocks ran dry, but eventually they did and this stuff, the original stuff became Really, really difficult to find. Several months later. 2019 stroke 20. Christmas coming up. Iron Brew decided to release a bit of a Christmas present for everybody in Scotland. Ta-da! Have a look at this. This, guys, is not even the Iron Brew original one that we were used to because it actually had changed before that in history, right? This is a limited edition Iron Brew bottle that they have released. Apparently, right, they have the original recipe somewhere stored in their lockers in their Iron Brew headquarters from 1901 and they decided to recreate that recipe full of sugar and all, 1901 and did a limited edition release. In today's episode, of course, I'm going to be trying the original Iron Brew, old and unimproved, the, the original Iron Brew and I'm very excited about it. So, this one here, original recipe Iron Brew, you can see they've created a nice retro sticker and this has brought joy to the nation once again. You know, I felt Scotland was on a bit of a downer ever since Iron Brew 
changed its recipe. So they've brought out these glass, but they're only available in glass bottles for now. Um, and we'll just see how they got on with it. But what it means is for now, we have Iron Brew back. And in today's episode, what I thought I would do, first of all, I'm gonna see if I can taste the difference between the aspartame new version and the old, unimproved, original Iron Brew. I have not tasted this yet, guys. It's been a while since it's been out and I've not had the chance to get some, but now I've got all my hands on it. This will be my first taste live on camera in today's episode of the vlog. And let me just read, they've actually put a bit of spiel on the back here. Iron Brew, 1901. Taste the first ever Iron Brew recipe, brewed just like we used to in 1901. Made from girders. It's brilliantly sweet and caffeine free, but it's still that taste you can't describe. Can't describe Iron Brew. Because there's nothing like it. Not back then, not now, not ever. Well, Iron Brew, you said it better than I could. So why on bloomin' hicks earth did you decide to change your recipe in the first place? I just can't fathom it. Anyway, taste test. Let's do it. All right, so here's the thing. Tekka is going to pour them into glasses for me, right? Only she will know which one is which. I'm using whiskey glasses and then I'll do a taste test. All right, I'm not looking though. Oh, can he look? I've also got a glass of water to cleanse my palate in between drinks. I'm looking, not looking. I'm not opening, not doing it, I'm just opening. Listen to that sound. Oh, they're different. Really? Mm-hmm. They can look. They can look? Yeah, done. Here. All right, we've got two whiskey glasses. They're different, that's weird. We've got here on the right and left, my right and my left, two different iron brews and a whiskey glass each. And I've also got a water in between them so I can cleanse my palate. I think that would be a mistake not to do that. All right, are we gonna get into this? A wee sniff. You should say they're different. Yeah, they do look different. One's got more gas in it. One's flatter and one's got more gas. They both smell delicious. This one I smelled it first and it was a much more pungent smell. I can't let that sway my judgment though. Let's taste it, right? Right hand side first. That is good. That's been a long time, guys, since I've had Iron Brew. I made a bit of a pledge to myself that since they would put aspartame in the drinks, which is not good for you, I would stop drinking it. It has been a good six months since I've had Iron Brew. It tastes blooming good. Let's cleanse the palate. All right, glass number two. Oh, that is not good. That is so clear. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I would be shocked. I can't, I can't even be wrong. It's so different. It's like night and day. It's like one is like drinking a diet drink. You know, like when you get like a diet Coke or a diet Iron Brew. The first one I had with the gas, the bubbles, was so good. That is delicious. That tastes diet. So, I'm going to say the gassy one is the original recipe Good Iron Brew. This one here, which looks flatter, is the new imitation rubbish that they made. Am I right or wrong? You're right. I'm right. Yeah. Knew it. That was so, guys, this is so clear. This is like delicious. Like this is like the Iron Brew that I remember when I was a kid, it just brought back all these memories of playing football in the field with my mates and like summertime in Scotland, wintertime in Scotland when I was young. So good. Diet. Awful. Ugh, chuck that out. Get it in the bin. Oh, Iron Brew is back. But for how long? That's nice. Yeah, sugar wins. Sugar wins. <laughs> that is exactly right. Tucker's right, sugar wins. Nobody in Scotland is pretending that this, the original Iron Brew with the sugar in it, is good for you. In fact, quite the opposite, right? But, wow, it's gassy. It's not gas, it makes a foam and I don't know. I mean, just, just take a, a wee look at that. That is a thing of beauty. It is pure sugar. That is why it was basically stopped, because it's full of sugar. Sugar is a big problem in Scotland. We've got high rates of diabetes, heart disease, and all the rest of it. We are the sick man of Europe, right, because of our eating habits. However, the government put a sugar tax on, right? That does not prohibit juice companies or whatever companies from selling us stuff. They could still do it. 
they would just have to charge more, right, for this extra tax. So I do not blame the governments. They need to recoup the costs of bad health and all that. It is back, and let me tell you, it is a thing of extraordinary, beautiful, flavorful delight. It's like the forbidden fruit. And the thing is, we're all adults here. We cannot make up our own mind. We can take a choice. If we want to have one of these every single day, surely it's on our own heads, be it. Like I said to you, can it describe the taste? It is indescribable. What it tastes like is my childhood in Scotland. Nostalgia. It's a national treasure. And the day that they decided to stop making it was very, very sad and tragic. I could drink a lot of that, a dangerous quantity of this stuff. It is so good. I'm telling you, there are people right now in Scotland that have stockpiled dozens and dozens of crates of this stuff in their house because who knows if this limited edition will continue to be made or not. It's much more expensive than their standard one that they sell now, but who cares? It is blooming marvellous. Even the design is amazing. The last time I had it, I was disgusted by the foul taste of aspartame, but now I've got this to remember. So if they do stop it, I'll have good memories, I'll have fond memories of this. Iron Brew is deep, they said. Well, for the moment, long live Iron Brew. And it's been great to share this experience with you. One of the best soft drinks out there, a national icon, a national hero, Iron Brew. Now that you've given us it back, now you've given us a wee taste of it back, don't take it away again. You will break the heart of the nation once again. I hope you found this interesting, amusing, educational. If you come to Scotland, give this stuff a try. Iron Brew it is the taste of Scotland. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. It's been great to have a laugh with you. And until the next episode, have a good morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world. Cheers.